Amen. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Amen. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. This is um this is the Christmas season and you know we we celebrated here on Thanksgiving. We celebrated a Thanksgiving celebration. And so Dr. Turner and I we 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 just uh, finished a Christmas CD, uh, just a short Christmas CD that celebrates all three seasons. Thanksgiving, all you've done. Thanksgiving, for all you've done. Thanksgiving unto God, you've given us your son. Thanksgiving, for all you've done. Thanksgiving. We give him the praise this morning. Amen. We're thankful this morning. We give him all the thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And you know, you know, in this, this next song, it's called Good Christmas. And it's a song that just celebrates all the good things about Christmas that we all remember growing up and that we can just carry in our heart and that we can enjoy about Christmas. And it's called Good Christmas. And so just li listen to the lyrics of the, of the song and I hope you um, enjoy it. Have a good time, have a good time. We got presents by the tree. We got you and got me. We're gonna see family and have a good time, have a good time. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. We got the turkey in the stove. We got punch in the bowl, lamb stew for the soul, and sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. We got the turkey in the stove. We got punch in the bowl, lamb stew for the soul, and sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. 
Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. 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 We got the presents by the tree. We got you and got me. We're gonna see family and have a good time. Have a good time. We got the presents by the tree. We got you and got me. We're gonna see family and have a good time. Have a good time. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. We got the turkey in the stove. We got punch in the bowl. Lamb stew for the soul. And sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. We've got the turkey in the stove. We've got punch in the bowl. Lamb stew for the soul. And sweet potato pie. Let's have a good time. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Ba la 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 la. Ba la 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 la. It's Christmas time. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Let's have a good time. Now we're saying good night. Turning off the Christmas lights, but our spirits still bright. We had a good time. We had a good time. Now we're saying good night. Turning off the Christmas lights, but our spirits still bright. We had a good time. We had a good time. Next year we're gonna have a good Christmas. Next year we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Sounds like we're gonna have a good Christmas. Ba la 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 la. Ba la 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 la. Ba la 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 la. It's Christmas time. Ba la 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 la. It's Christmas time. Good Christmas. Amen. <laughs> Good Christmas. Good Christmas. Amen. And that's what we um, we pray that each one of us have a good Christmas. And um, and so this 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 song we actually wrote um, a while back, and we dedicate this coming this song called "Bless Us Indeed" for the new year as we get ready to go into a new year. I declare the prayer of Jabez upon each one of us here that God blesses us indeed. He blesses our life indeed in every area. And so I decree and we decree this blessing. So just listen to the words and receive the blessing for your own life. Yes. Yeah. 
This morning. Amen. I believe he's blessed us indeed right here at Faith Country Holiness Church of Gallatin. Amen. I believe he's blessed each one of us. Amen. Amen. So that's why we're here this morning. We're here to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The birth of our Savior because he has truly blessed us indeed. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to be seated. We're going to take time to commune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he he was born into the earth for one purpose, one main purpose, and that was to die on the cross to pay for our sins, to deliver us from sin. God sent his son into the world. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we've come out to celebrate the birth of our savior the birth of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11 Starting at verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now, we understand as believers that when Jesus' body was broken on the cross, his body was broken so that our bodies could be made whole. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, it begins to tell us what Jesus accomplished for us in his redemption work. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, starting at verse one, it says, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's how we get saved. By believing the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? There's a lot of voices out there saying a lot of different things about, you know, God or belief or faith or uh, what they believe in or don't believe in. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we get saved by believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and we shall be saved. Believing that God raised him from the dead for our salvation. Believing that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. And that God raised him from the dead for our salvation. And that's how we're saved. And that's how we're born again. 
That's how we accept the salvation. Us that are here. So Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. Is that right? He said, this do in remembrance of me. Why did he say that? Because he knew that it could be a tendency for even believers, those that have been born again, to forget what Jesus did for them in the death, burial, and resurrection, and why. Many doctrines out there that can cause people to forget. And so it says in verse 1 of Isaiah 53, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is the strength of God revealed? How many has seen the mighty hand of God in your own life? How many know that you've been changed? And you know you've been changed from where, where you were before you were saved to after you were saved. And over the years of walking with the Lord, how many can see the significant impact of having Jesus in your life? I can see the significant impact of having Jesus in my life, praying to him, walking after his ways, seeking his word, going to church, giving tithes and offerings. I've seen the significant impact. If I wanted evidence, all I have to do is look at my life, look at the lives of my, those, my loved ones that have been impacted by Jesus, others that I've seen, and I could say, there's something about something about that name Jesus. There's something about that name Jesus that has changed the world. Verse 3 of Isaiah 53 says, He is despised and rejected of men, of man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. He bore our griefs and pains and sufferings and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. So Jesus took your punishment, the penalty for your sin, for my sin, he took it in his body. God sacrificed his body, his blood, for our salvation, him to take the penalty of sin in his body for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. That jealousy, that strife, that envy, that anger, that wrath, that unforgiveness. Jesus was bruised for that. Otherwise, you'd have to pay for your own sins because God judges the heart. But Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The chastisement that was due us to have peace again with God because we had, we had broken his law, but Jesus took the punishment so that we can have peace with God again. And with his stripes, we are healed. Sickness and disease no longer has a right to your body or to my body having a short lifespan you're no longer under the curse you're blessed to live a long satisfied life because of the blood of Jesus at this time we're going to take the bread in remembrance of him and as we break of the bread let us accept wholeness and healing in our physical bodies and let us take a uh, have a renewal in our soul and in our spirit. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Break and eat in remembrance of him. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And so that's what we're doing as we take of the communion. We are, we are testifying or proclaiming the Lord Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection from the dead 
for our salvation. 2 Corinthians 5, starting at verse 17, it lets us know that because of the blood of Jesus, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. So, when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we became a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All aspects of your life are new. You are born again. Born again. You are a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Your old lifestyle, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18 says, and all things are of God. Your finances, your health, your future, your social life, every part of you, your family, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God has brought us back into proper relationship with him and he's, paid, he's balanced the books, balanced our accounts, where we had a sin debt against God. Through the blood of Jesus, Jesus paid the debt so that there's no penalty or no debt against us. We're debt free in regard to sin. And so no, there, there's no there's no creditor of sickness and disease or poverty or lack or failure can come against us because we're debt free. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So now that you're reconciled, you tell others so that they can get saved. To wit that God was in Christ, God the Father, he was in Christ the Son, reconciling the world to himself. He was buying back, or, or balancing the book, buying back the world unto himself, not imputing or not accounting to their trespasses unto them or unto us, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Once you're born again, then you become a witness so you could tell someone else so that they can be saved. Verse 20 of 2 Corinthians 5. Now then we are ambassadors. I come to you today as an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. In other words, he's reconciled you, but he's also asking you to be reconciled in your mind. Be reconciled in your thinking and in your lifestyle, that you are brought back into proper relationship with God. You belong to God. Verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus was made sin for us. So we're no longer debtors to sin, to live under sin, or to the flesh. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You and I, we've been made the very righteousness of God. And so every day we should live unto righteousness, manifesting righteousness, God's way of doing and being right in the earth. That's righteousness. God's way of doing and being right in the earth. In every decision, we should manifest righteousness, God's way of doing and being right in this situation. God is love, so we should manifest the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faithfulness, temperance. Against such there is no law. We should manifest God's way of doing and being right in every situation because we are the righteousness of God in Him. We are a manifestation of God's righteousness in the earth. 2 Corinthians 8 9 also lets us know that Jesus delivered us from the curse of poverty. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, though Jesus was rich, he was rich in the heavens before he left heaven. He was rich in the heavens, streets of gold. I'm saying all the, the, every, the splendor of heaven. But also he was wealthy, he was well off on the earth. He was a successful carpenter before going into ministry. 
And then after ministry, he had a, a well-supported ministry during the three and a half years that he ministered. In fact, he had a treasurer. If you don't have any money, you don't need a treasurer. You can carry your own $2 in your pocket. But he had a treasurer. Judas was the treasurer before he betrayed Jesus. So he carried the bag of money around to pay for their expenses when they went into different towns uh, preaching. So Jesus had 12 men and others, his ministry team that he supported. In one place, he had preached to 5,000 men plus women and children. So if each one of those men were married, you're talking about 10,000 people. If they had two children, you're talking about 20,000 people could have been out there. He preached to, and they had enough money in the bag to potentially feed them, just go to and buy enough food to feed 20,000 people. But he did a miracle and he fed them with five loaves, with, with two fish and five loaves. But they, one of the disciples said, do you want us to go to the city and buy enough food to feed these people? In other words, they had it like that. So it says here in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 8, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. In other words, he allowed them to strip him of his wealth or riches. In fact, he had a robe on that they stripped him of, but they didn't tear it up because it was like a like a, a Brooks Brothers suit or a money suit in today's um, clothing. It was a, an expensive robe, seamless robe. And the soldiers, they gambled for his robe rather than, you know, just throw it away or tear it up. They gambled for it because that was an expensive garment that he, he had. They gambled for his robe. But for your sakes, he became poor on the cross. He was stripped of that on the cross and took on our poverty. Why did he do it? So that ye through his poverty might be rich. He took on everything that the curse brought to us. Sickness, disease, condemnation, fear, guilt, inferiority, insecurity, intimidation, poverty, lack, failure, he took it in himself so he could pay the penalty so that you and I could go free. And we accept our freedom by faith. And so as we take the cup, we are proclaiming, I am free from sin. I am free from sickness, disease, poverty, lack, failure, insecurity. I'm free. Intimidation, in any sense of inferiority, guilt, shame. I'm free because of what Jesus did. And I'm a son or daughter of God in right standing with God. And therefore, since I'm in right standing with God, Proverbs 28, 1 says, the righteous are bold as a lion. I can be bold as a lion in life, confident. So at this time, let us take the cup in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us through your Holy Son, Jesus. Thank you for delivering us from sin, sickness, poverty, lack, depression, oppression, and all that sin has brought into the world. And we thank you that you are our Father, and we are son and your daughters, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>